just in the city of Barno at the river's edge and just trying to capture something of the architecture. This is all done in the 17th and 18th century, pretty much. And now they host cruise ships. Here's a bridge going over the river, and it was built by Napoleon Bonaparte so that they could go to Spain and do the war thing. There's 17 arches, which is the same number of letters in Napoleon's name. There's some ego for you. I'm just going to show how close these properties are to one another. So here's a first growth Chateau Margaux, and it is right there. And then I'm just going to turn around, and you see the fairy tale castle over there. That's Chateau Palmer, which is a third growth. And really, what's separating them? Quite a lot. We're at Chateau Palmer, and I'm just going to show you a little bit of the different soil conditions. But first of all, we have the neighbor. Chateau Margaux behind me and it's just on this side of the church. You can just kind of see the roof line. You can see how close it is. Under the soil, there's really three, four different kinds of soil types in a really, really small area. And I'm just going to show you uh, an example of, okay, so this has like lots of rocks in it. It's also got soil and it's from the Dordogne River. Uh, and it started up in the volcanic sort of middle of France, and then the river flowed down and deposited this kind of sandy soil. So it's that specific kind of soil type that the Merlot loves, and this is Merlot. Okay, now I'm going to move over, and I'm going to show you how different the soil becomes in really quite a short amount of time. Now it's looking more like a riverbed, and you can see like the rocks. It's just rocks like that. There's a little bit of soil, but mostly it's rocks. And at first they didn't think that anything could grow here. Now, we're, this is a long time ago because of the soil conditions, but obviously things are going quite well. So now I'm going to show you the third type. And we're just going to walk just a little ways down here. And now it's big rocks, like mini galettes. So this is the size of the rocks now in this in this section. So what they do is they take they take grapes from there and the sandier area and they vinify them in a tank. Then they take the the, the rows with the smaller pebbles, they vinify them in a tank, then they take these rows and they vinify them in a tank. Then because they'll all be different, then the cellar master or the winemaker will blend them all. Okay, now just at the end here, so this kind of goes along, and then I'm just going to point down to the end, and at the end, that's back to the sandier soil. Those will be put in another tank. I'm probably right in between the little village of Margot and the village of Lystrac, so we're familiar with the chateau. And I'm just gonna, we're just gonna take a peek at the soil here. It changes from place to place. So here, let's just take some of that. Okay, so it's all sandy with some rocks in it. Okay, we're gonna see different soils. Yeah, really the ground pebbles, like really, really riverbed. But lots of sand, more so than when I was just at Chateau Palmer, but I'll film that later.
gotta say the land doesn't differ too much from what I'm filming right here. It's pretty fat, flat. Sometimes there's rolling hills and we can't see the river, but it's just a bit there somewhere, not too far away. New. No. It's old. Okay, so the chateau's on the one side of the road. Behind me, there's a chateau. And I'm just going to walk up a few paces, and you can see the vineyard. So the vineyard area is beyond and both sides of the road. I'm in Poya on the wharf side, and it apparently if the grapevines see the water, those are the best grapevines. Well, the grapevines would have to have pretty much 20-20 vision because it seems that they're fairly far off in the river because And there's more of the That's kind of what you have. I'm standing in the vineyard of Mouton Rachel, and it is the very best of terroir. We are on a slight hill. It, it doesn't look like much of a hill, it's more like a mound, but they called it a little hill. So, on one side of me, we're going to look at Mouton Rochil, and on the other side of me, about 500 meters away, is where Lafitte Rochil, they join together, and their vineyards are combined on this beautiful terroir. So let's take a look first at Mouton Rochil, is on this side. There's the massive construction. And then we're just going to swing back. I don't think you'll be able to see there. Well, there's a stand of trees over in the distance, and that's where the chateau is. And we're going to finish up with a look at the soil, and it does look like gravel. Fluffy rocks you. The vines are hiding back there. There's St. Steve just right over there. And then here's some vines. And they can actually see the water because right behind me, within about 500 meters, is the water. And there's some sunflower seeds. Well, there's no grapes growing here because we are at the Atlantic Ocean. It is gorgeous. Now I'm on the estuary side. So the, all of the port now is right there. And then that is the very tip. And there's a ferry that goes back and forth. 